Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Tool to Play presents Still Got Game with Derek D. Smooth Nolan and Joel Duda Rock Albert. Like sponsor still got game give us a call at 773-527-2961 or email us at podcast at tool to play.com hey now welcome back ladies and gentlemen to still got game episode 22 still got game is the official podcast of tool to play.com i am as always derek d smooth nolan and i am joel dude i rock Allen. what is going on joel dude i rock albert what's going on derek is that it's fucking cold here Cold. It's cold. Yeah, we sent that your way. Yeah, we thanks. I was enjoying the negative 10 degree weather, and I said to myself, I want negative 50. And so I got negative 50. Nice. That it's like freezing. That'll, uh, they'll yeah. put some hair in your chest. Yeah, no, it actually just freezes it right off, <laughs> turns out. <laughs> you just shave by like wiping the yeah, cold hairs off. <laughs> chills go down your spine as icicle hairs, you know, fall from your chest. It's gross. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I've just been kind of sitting indoors. They actually closed down most of Chicago. I didn't go to work today. Uh, schools are closed and everything, so it's just been like a, a nice. chill was, day, was, pun intended. That was the end of our last week. Was that way Thursday was, night I'll, into I'll Friday? Uh, it was down. It didn't get down uh, more than you know single digits below zero, oh. but we had like a foot and a half of snow. Some places two feet of snow in in less than a day. Uh, so obviously coming down fast, and we were home here with all the kids, and it was a it was a good time. Lots of video games were played, and yeah, can't complain, right? No, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Um, and uh, how was your New Year's? Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, it was very tame in comparison to my many other New Year's that I don't remember. See, I remember <laughs> this year, so I know it could have been that good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we went out. We had a couple drinks with some friends. Uh, we went to two different parties, and then sort of as soon as New Year's hit, I was tired. We were like, in, I was in bed by like twelve thirty. Oh, was nice. Perfect, really. What about you? Yeah, we, did, we did the, uh, the in-house thing. Had my parents over. Did, uh, oh, this was like our quiet New Year's at home year, so we did yeah. that. And then uh, next morning we got up, cruised down to Connecticut, drove down there to our local uh, Native American casino, and we saw nice. uh, supporting uh, Native uh, Americans. You're a champion, exactly. man. Yeah. That's how we do it. We well give back. Yeah. Cheer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we went down there. We saw Cirque du Soleil. Did some gambling. Came back with some extra money, and uh, it was a good time. That was a good New Year's Day way to kill that day off, and then. Uh, obviously back to work on Thursday and now we're here on Monday. I noticed it was a very, it felt like a very subdued New Year's for everyone I talked to, not just you. Everyone seemed like this New Year's was just like, meh, I don't know what it is, but I, a lot of my friends, they didn't even go out and like, I guess it's a sign of just being older. I don't know, maybe not. It's when it ends in a 13. It's when it ends in a 13. Yeah. yeah. You're like, yeah, whatever. You're like, it was a 13 year. It doesn't even count. I don't care. No one cares. It's like Rhode Island. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow no offense to our rhode island listeners right, yeah. uh, you are you live you live close to real states right you're almost real estate almost little roadie all right <laughs> now we'll jump into feedback from last week's show remember if you want to leave us a voicemail it will cut you off after a minute the one ring comment no yeah <laughs> is this really a comment from this week yeah it is yeah okay <laughs> This is why we have outtakes in the audio version. <laughs> the One Ring comments. You guys were asking about my comment from last episode where people at my Christmas party were talking about gaming podcasts. It was our office Christmas party, and it was my younger gaming group of work friends. Yours came up along with the CAG cast. I listen to both, but do find yours much funnier and more enjoyable. Excellent end of the year wrap up episode, by the way. Well, thanks, guys. That's a. Uh, one ring, you are you nailed it. And your buddies there that we don't know, uh, I'd say uh, you know we love the CAD cast. Good friends with Dave Abram, uh, Dave Abrams, CBD from Cheap Ass Gamer, Wombat five two seven seven Wombat. He's been on panels of mine at PAX East. Uh, good friends of Too Old Play. Good friends of the show. But you know what? We do like to hear that you like. Uh, they may have more listeners, but you know I, I'm glad you like our show better. Not for long. As yes. Like yeah. NFL. Not for long. Exactly. Exactly. Good comment. Right. Yes, yeah, and thank you for, uh, for filling us in. That was, that, that's how this is supposed to work. Someone comments, we ask them a follow-up question, and then they get back to us instead yeah, of just... like. Sometimes we give you the follow-up, and then you're just like, 
Oh, they talking to me? That was my question, but I don't think they're talking to me. No. They just check out completely. They're just out. <laughs> yeah. The one thing was like, I asked, they answered, and they asked me back. It was like a, a, a bond. It was like a boom, boom, boom. We played. It was like a, a volley. You it know, reminds me of like another Hitman show called The Hit and Run. It's another show. <laughs> Very soon where you ask Hit questions and then he refuses to answer. It just That's leaves. Doing. Yeah. He just leaves. It's not really no. a show. No, we hate that. That's a <laughs> shitty show. So, yeah, take a take note from One Ring. Uh, if we ask you a follow-up question, please join us in the show. Yeah. Uh, game player comments. Love the video version of the podcast. This week's episode that you had a producer for was so well done. Hopefully you guys keep them around. Keep up the good shit. <laughs> um, well, right now, since we don't pay him and he's doing a lot of work for us, we're, we're probably planning on keeping him around. Yeah, this is the best. Uh, this is the best thing you could ever get in life, which is uh, slave labor. Yes, and, yeah. he, and he does. He does a good job, and he doesn't <laughs> cost any money. Right. Like, like you'd be silly to give this up. That'd be like, oh, uh, you know, the supermodel comes over every day to fuck me. But you know, I don't know. I, just, I had it with that. No, I don't it, pay her, so I just feel very. Ugh, it's gross. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, we don't feel dirty not happened. paying him. No, it's never happened. We actually feel better not paying him because that way we know it's just our friendship, and it's money isn't getting in the way. Right. <laughs> right. And so if Hit ever asks, it's kind of like, wow, dude, are you really going to devalue this friendship that we've created with one another? Is that how you want, you want to put a value on this friendship? I wouldn't do that personally. No, yeah, that's how we know he's serious and, and he loves us. Exactly. Uh, but uh, I'm sure we will pass those, uh, those kind words on to Hit. And since he typed them into the show, he already knows. But uh, I say that out loud so that all of our listeners know that Thanks. we appreciate it. All right. Marky comments. I hopped on your Twitch channel expecting Wildstar streaming as you advertised. <laughs> I, was, I was pretty pissed that you weren't playing, but by the end of your show, I was a new viewer. Your year-end list was well thought out and not the usual boring top 10 stuff. Can't wait for your next episode. So that's what we call the old tool to play bait and switch. <laughs> come on in. You, you come for Wildstar, you leave with still got game. That's what we do. We're snatching viewers. And uh, you know what? You probably had more fun watching the hour and 10 minutes of our show last week than you would have had you actually seen someone kind of fumble through Wildstar and be like, oh, what am I doing? Oh, it's only in beta. I don't even understand. I don't even know. What's I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands because this is how you play an MMO. But <laughs> like, I don't even understand why my guys are moving. My hands are up here. But um, yeah, you were definitely better off watching our show. I would, I would agree, although I am playing Wildstar and I don't... Mm. But see, you know what you're doing. Your hands are yeah, up here. I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. I've realized the keyboard has functionality built into it that allows me to control my character. So I'm using yeah. that instead. That's a, that's a pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone, anyone that's playing on the PC, there are things around your desk you can use to control. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not all connect voice here. It's not. You can't speak to it. Yeah. All right, and uh, last but not least, Sarcasmo Jones comments. Best show of the year. Great job on the 2013 recap and kudos to Hit on the production. So look at that. That's twice that Hit has been called out for his, his great job done. Uh, twice that we were called out. Three times we were called out on our end of year. Uh, well, one was called a recap. One was called a wrap. Everybody calls it a different thing. We didn't even know what it was called. But we liked doing it for you. And it was a fun time for us. And even though we disagreed, that made it more fun. I like the disagreements. Yeah. So makes we, if we agreed all the time, we'd be like, what do you think, Jay? Oh, me too. Next yeah. thing. <laughs> I'm like, that would the suck. Honestly, the problem, the one the criticism that I would give our show, and I don't like to give it any criticism because it's essentially flawless. If I was going to give it a criticism, it would be that because we agree, we are like-minded, uh, we don't get those disagreements very often. So it's nice that we have something where we can you know, say, hey, I think you're wrong. And I know yeah. you're wrong because I'm better than you, frankly. Yeah, exactly. That's why we do that. Yeah. And that's why we, we have to sometimes feed the outline full of shit that we can fight about. Right. Because right. otherwise, it's all bro fives. Yeah, uh, just, there's no room for fighting on the rocket. Yeah, just me and you in a rocket high fiving all day. No one wants to see that transpire. If a, a battle on a rocket sounds fantastic, though. Yeah. Now, if you do want to see us high fiving a rocket all day, we have another stream for that where we just sit around agreeing all day. It's the, the, the daytime stream. It's not the nighttime show here. Soap opera version of our show. Yeah. Like, hey, what do you think about uh, you know, Arrow? Oh, I love Arrow. Me too. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Let I just me, one me. word sentence everything you ask me. I just say yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's much less enjoyable, but it has shitloads of your I think two, three million people tune in the live stream at a time. <laughs> it's, it's sick. <laughs> All right. Well, if any feedback, either give us a call 773-527-2961 or 
or email us at podcast at tool to play.com. And then site related news this week. I have nothing, Jay. Nothing. Any really updates? Or, you, know? you guys uh, heard last week. We're going to be sending out an email in a little bit here. Um, having trouble writing it because I had, but we're changing so much that I don't want to totally freak people out. Uh, but it will go out hopefully this week. Uh, as soon as I get it, you know, matured, I guess would be the best word to be, to put it, to put it uh, bluntly. Um, so once that goes out, we'll be sending that stuff out to everybody. And that's going to take a while, obviously, cause there's 40,000 plus registered members. So it's going to take a while. Um, but other than that, no, nothing else going on. Still working full steam ahead on, on version four and the mobile space and stuff like that. So as soon as we have news, you know, we'll, we'll let you guys know. Um, but really making sure that uh, we put out quality vidcasts is what we're doing right now. That is the, the prime goal. Here. That's the prime goal. Content is king. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, speaking of King Jay, what the fuck are t- us two kings playing this week? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty. Um, I'm still in the beta as well, so I've been playing the beta. I'll just call it the beta now in case it gets me in trouble if I actually say what the beta is. Um, Call of Duty, though, is my, my go-to choice. I'll play it for like 20 minutes uh, out of the day. And this, this week, I, I, don't know, I think I put maybe three or four hours in it. I don't know. That's about it, though. I have, I have yet to go back to Battlefield because it left such a horrible taste in my mouth. I know they've patched it. But I literally have not booted it up. It's just, it's maybe one of these days. Maybe next week I'll, I'll give it a shot again. Um, but Call of Duty has been my game, believe it or not. What about yes. you? Uh, well, I played a little bit of Call of Duty because obviously with being on vacation and everything else, I think this was the first, uh, last night I played some Call of Duty for like three, four, five hours. That was the first time since uh, before Christmas. Uh, other than that, played a little bit of Peckle 2. And then over the, the holiday here with the kids here and everything, we played a shitload of Zen Pinball too. It was like, really? yeah, well, because it, like I said, uh, we got all our old tables for free, uh, import them right in the PS4, and there's six of us in the house, and everybody's like grabbing a controller. You log in, you see all your friends. So I see like the DCD and all these other guys, including everybody in the family, because it's free to create your PSN tag. So I see everybody else's scores, and they're all on the leaderboard, and everybody wants to knock everybody else down. And uh, as of the recording here of the 16 tables, I think that we have 15 of them, I hold the the top score of my friends. Look at one, you. one tiff is ahead of me and it's by a huge margin. <laughs> wow. I know she, she came out of nowhere. Like I was crushing her. And then all of a sudden she had this like ball busting Epic game and it's like twice my score. So she like took a week off work and like <sighs> just playing at three, honed her skills, just, honed her skills. You didn't know. <laughs> yes. But, uh, that game still, I can't recommend it enough. And especially if you hadn't on the PS three or your Vita, those tables are all free. The game is free. So you might as well fucking download it and have a good time. I still, have, I still haven't done it. Still haven't, I'm going to eventually, but I still haven't done it. And uh, speaking of, I guess this is a good time to add this in the, the what we're playing segment. If any of you want to play with any of us, I am D-Smooth on Xbox Live, and I am the D-Smooth on PlayStation Network. And I am Joel Dude I Rock Albert, so that's Dude I Rock D O O D I R O C K um, on the Xbox. And then, of course... Because I was late to the game, I'm like, "What am I, Dude? I Rock Three or something?" On the play- <laughs> terribly non easy for you guys to remember. I apologize. Yeah, maybe one of these days we'll get our tags. We'll have a hit since we pay him so much money. He can like put our tags up for this section yeah. of the show. It's like something. add us. Yes, exactly. He's nodding in contempt. He's angry. Yes. Oh well. No, that's what he does. That's what he does. It's- He'll be fine. Yeah. We fine. Right. Well, on that, why don't we hop over into the uh, new releases for this week and. Because we're still so close to Christmas, not a whole lot. There's only one new release out this week, and it's for a console that sucks. Uh, and it's not the Ouya. That's a console that blows man penis. This is just a console that sucks. And this is uh, out for the Wii U this week is We Fit You. This is the Wii U take on the much purchased but never played Wii Fit franchise for all of the Wii consoles. Uh, what you have here is a game that came out free about a month ago in the eShop. And you could download the game. It's actually free all the way through the end of this month, I think. Uh, but it was not bundled with any hardware. So there's there's two versions of this game that you can pick up. One comes with this new Fit Meter, which is Wii's solution for, you know, track all your body shit. The same stuff the Kinect can do, like, through your skin because it's fucking like a god box on top of your TV. And it's like, oh, your heart rate is this and you're dying. I've called the police. No, <laughs> it's like here you have to wear some Fit Meter on your arm. And there's a version that comes with just the Hit Meter or uh, the fit meter, or there's a version that, that's another show for Hitman, the hit meter. Uh, there's a show that comes with just the fit meter, or one that comes with the fit meter and the balance board, in case you didn't stock up on balance boards through the past iteration of 
We Fit, We Fit Plus, and all the other things that people bought on New Year's Day and never played. Uh, basically, it's the same shit as the previous Wii Fit games, uh, except now, in addition to, instead of just holding like the little Wiimote and fucking, you know, rub one out with that while you're doing your exercises, you actually, some of these exercises, you have to hold the giant Wii controller. So now you've got that big ass thing while you're exercising, which is totally the workflow that usually people do when they're exercising is they're always holding, uh, like an iPad sized TV screen with sticks on it because, there's nothing better for working out than kind of moving around with that. And it's, it's just a piece of shit. So I'm saying who gives a fuck about this? Not me. I, I don't give a I fuck. I'm sure. System, that, yeah, there's no, it's not. No, <laughs> I'm sure it'll sell some. Cause yeah. Each, now granted we fit sold a shitload. And then everybody that I talked to, like, cause I had all those friends that bought Wii's that were not video game people. And you're like, Oh, where's, uh, you know, you were doing, you picked up, we fit. What do you think of that? And you like look over in the corner of their room and they've got like, you know, six months of shit stacked on top of that balance board. Like nobody used that. And then when, when we fit the, the plus came out with the Wii motion plus, you know, you looked again and it's like the same group. Everybody buys it right when it comes out. They're like, Oh, this is my time to get fit with the Wii. And no, it doesn't happen. And the same thing's gonna happen again. You know, you want to get fit, fucking fire up your Xbox one, go in there, go to Xbox fitness. And you have like 20 different workout apps, whether you want Jillian Michaels or fucking, you want to do, uh, insanity. You want to do P ninety X? They're all there for free for now. Like you get them free. I think through March, they're, all those workouts are free. Uh, they're right on your Connect, and uh, doesn't cost you anything. So it's you know. totally worth doing. Way more than the Wii U. Let me tell you right now. I am a P ninety graduate. It's the greatest workout ever. You can tell by Jay's ripped shirt. <laughs> I'm a I'm a P ninety graduate and failure. By the way, yes, and I'm actually now <laughs> back on P ninety as of uh, today. Yeah, it, before. Not- it, before he, he was on video here, he used to tear through shirts. It was fucking oh, insane. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. he, he had to lay off for a little bit, and then you know, he laid off a little too long, and that's why the he's... Roids, you know, the roids get to you. Right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right. yeah once, you, once you can't see your testicles, you have to stop. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's, it's, in the, it's in the notes for P90X. It's like, <laughs> if you can no longer see your testicles, <laughs> and you only have a dick, stop for a little bit. Right. Exactly. Yes. So that he took his, his mandatory so four-month my, hiatus. My, the, ball, my, the, balls, <laughs> the balls re-emerged, and now he's... Three pounds, which is not good. And uh, back on, I'm back hey, on the kick. But you got your balls back. Got you, balls. you got that going for you. Got so. those. Finally got those again. All uh, right. Well, speaking of balls, why don't we hop over into gaming news? A first story! So first story, and this is an interesting one. This is uh, no mods for Titanfall on the PC. Uh, The studio will evaluate after launch. And this is via joystick. So normally, before I even get in the story, you see this uh, with when they start on PC platforms first. But this is kind of a non-issue for me. Uh, However, Titanfall on the PC will not support mods or offer any map editors to players at launch. Uh, Respawn Entertainment co-founder Vince Sempella confirmed as much on Twitter, uh, though he did say that the studio will evaluate after the launch. Uh, Former Infinity Ward heads Jason West and Vince Zimpella were dismissed, as you all recall, by Activision in early 2010, spurring the lengthy and very public battle uh, between the duo and the publisher. Uh, The two would quickly go on, of course, to to reform as Respawn Entertainment and partner up with EA and begin work on Titanfall. Titanfall will uh, launch on March 11th, 2014, exclusively, and this is probably the key to this art, this entire article, uh, for the Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC. While Titanfall will remain an exclusive to these platforms throughout the lifetime of the game, which is pretty cool, Respawn has said it plans to develop for the PS4 down the line. So I have my own thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts not being a part of the PC modding community and map community? What do you, what do you think? I don't give, I don't a, give fuck. a fuck. You don't give a fuck. No, I think there's enough. Uh, if you're a PC guy that wants to to take an engine and do like something from the ground up, there, there's plenty of shit from uh, from Valve there. You have plenty of tools at your disposal. You can do any total conversion you want of any of Valve's products. You don't need to do a total conversion out of the gate on the Titanfall engine. It just doesn't need to be done. It's not something that's a gate. It's not holding you back. I would rather them spend the time making the game awesome than to make sure that uh, some of the, some, for some of these companies, it's a lot easier. The tools that they give to people to, to do modding and to do level development and everything are the tools they use in-house. If, if you have a bunch of retards working on your maps, you have a real simplistic set of tools they use. But here, 
obviously they're using something that's a little more complex in house. It's not something that can be public facing. They can't just like be like, oh, and here's our tool set. Let's release it to you. So I would rather them not spend time making that user friendly and spend more time working on the game. Yeah, I, it's to me, it seems like I would much rather have it the other way. Yeah, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. My whole thing whenever I see this is is a monetary issue, right? For me, whenever I see an article where it says they're not going to do this map and modding shit, uh, the reason is simple. This is to sell. This is a game that will sell consoles for Xbox, period. It will. This will move units for them. Um, it's not going to be coming out for any other system. So for them to do map making and giving this incentive to for the community to go out and build awesome things, sadly, that will actually hurt their revenue going forward. I don't think they necessarily care about PC, and I know that sounds weird coming from a guy like me that is probably more pro-PC pro PC than anybody, but the reality is if you want to get people on the couch, you want people to buy an Xbox One, you need these titles that will push people to that, uh, and it just makes fiscal sense not to have a modding community. They have to have people then... That, like Derek said, they got to track the tools, they got to build the tools, they got to have people that will work on all the maps. And while the end result for us, the consumer, is really great, believe it or not, that also doesn't, or that doesn't necessarily mean it's great for them as a company. So, I, whenever I see this stuff, if it's a PC port, uh, I don't ever expect to see a map editor. In fact, I would be shocked. I mean, maybe down the line, like a year from now, you'll, you might see one. Then again, you might see one on the Xbox One as well, right? I mean, that's a, that's a possibility too. So it's not an issue for me. I, I'll actually be getting it for, you know, I am a PC gamer. I'll be getting it for the console simply because it's a way for me to play with my friends. So oh, yeah. it's, it's just a non-issue. It's, I mean, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. Totally bad news. But it's also expected. I mean, it's, it's, it's expected in this yeah. day and age. DLC, baby, how else are they going to get you to, you know, pony up later on? Come on. Go back to the well. Go back to the well. Exactly. So, you know, it sucks. I agree. It's not a great thing, but. It's inevitable. Sorry. Yeah. It's six. Yeah. You got to pick which thing you want and we'd rather have a better game. Yeah. Frankly, stronger yeah. community, more people on the one. I don't know. Not a bad yeah. thing. All right. So for some good news from our friends over at Child's Play, the Child's Play charity has raised a record $7.6 million. And that's with the pinky right by the lip there. Um, in 2013, this is via Gama Sutra. So the Child's Play charity has confirmed it has raised $7.6 million for kids in 2013. Thanks in no small part to donations from across the gaming community, which obviously makes sense. Um, that's a new fundraising record for the charity, which brought in just over 5 million. So almost a 2.6 million increase over the year in 2012. The money of course will be used to provide toys games, and other supplies to children in hospitals and domestic violence shelters worldwide. Uh, it is especially noteworthy when you consider that in 2013, Child's Play uh, initiated the pilot program that provided select domestic violence shelters with game carts, uh, which included like a television, a game system, and then games for them to play. Uh, in light of the charity's recent success with that program, it will be expanded to shelters across the U.S. in 2014. Child's Play also celebrated its 10th anniversary in 2013, announcing it had raised over $25 million since the charity first began collecting donations to provide games uh, to sick kids at Seattle Children's Hospital in 2003. So very good stuff there. Uh, Child's Play's project manager, uh, Jamie Dillon, thanked the gaming community at large for its support in, reason, in a recent blog post attributing the lion's share of the donations to individual uh, contributions on the small scale through... So this is... Pretty cool. This means the the tiny money is what's actually making them money, not huge, you know, twenty thousand dollar donations. While well, they do have it's very cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, quote: The bulk of our donations don't come from the form of huge grants. The millions are made up of the ten, twenty, and fifty dollar donations. They come from gaming marathons, golf tournaments, eBay auctions, and bake sales. They come from an incredible community. Quote or end quote. Wrote Dylan. Quote: The community coming together for ten years has now resulted in 25.2, let's call it, million dollars. Uh, we are humbled, proud, and overwhelmed with the gratitude. Thank you for making 2013 the best year yet, end quote. And uh, we love Child's Play. This is just, I think this is a news story we saw where, you know, we we actually obviously have love for them. It's been our charity of choice for five, years. Yeah, <laughs> or six years now. Um, so it's cool to see them grow to like this. It's a behemoth when it comes to, uh, charities. I mean, they're, you know, 25 million, um, lifelong and, and now it's 7.6 million this year. It's pretty cool stuff to see. I mean, right. uh, it, and everybody be. has their own go-to charity, but this is one that 
<clears throat> excuse me, especially for our audience, it, it should the value of it should ring true to you. So sometimes you're like, oh, I gave for this research or that research, and you don't really see that sort of immediate return on your investment. Here, you can see that they're for years and years they were going to all these hospitals and filling them with video games and stuff to make these kids. You know, these kids are in there and, you know, they're trying to make it seem like, you know, things are not bleak and things are not horrible and, you know, everything's fine for you. But the kids, they, they know better. And, and just giving them some kind of distraction is really what they need. And, and Child's Play has been phenomenal doing that. And uh, this past year with the introduction of the stuff in the, the, the vi- domestic violence shelters is uh, like they're like, we're pulling in so much now we can cover all these hospitals. And you know what? This is another thing. Like when these moms and kids are taken out of these super abusive households and they're put in these shelters, you know, like these kids, they're scared. They're all by themselves. They're with their mom in the shelter. Th- that's another great place where kids are. Uh, they kind of need some distraction and video games are that perfect thing. And child's play has been from day one. Great at doing this. Uh, we actually we know Jamie Dillon. We we ran, uh, we talked to her for a while at Pactor's party this year at E3. And she was telling us about the great stuff that was going on with uh, with child's play at that point. So. Uh, just great news. We love them. Like they, like Jay said, they're our charity of choice. Yeah. Every land we've had, when except for the last hiatus years of lands, um, they, they are definitely where all of our our proceeds go because we do love them. And they're, uh, I think that everybody that that contributes can feel like um, it's something that's important to them, as opposed to like you can't just say, well, you know, I'm going for cancer research or diabetes. Everybody has their own disease du jour or a family disease that they feel like giving money to. But this is something that as gamers, we can all collectively come together on. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and we, we love supporting them and we're glad that they've, uh, they've done this. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yep. Uh, and on related news, and this is, I don't know if this is bad or what we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, PAX is to separate from Penny Arcade in co-founder's New Year's resolution. This is via his blog, but uh, Joystick is the one that commented on it. Um, so Penny Arcade, the comic, is officially distancing itself from PAX, the yearly game convention, which is held now in Seattle, Boston, and, of course, Melbourne, the newest edition. Uh, co-creator Mike Krahulik announced the ideological split in a blog post as part of his New Year's resolution to be less of a, quote, bully. Interesting. Uh, quote, you'll notice that it is no longer the Penny Arcade Expo, uh, Expo um, Krulik writes. It's outgrown us, and it belongs to the game community at large, uh, now not just for Penny Arcade fans. Someday I expect to attend the PAX and not even be recognized. That's honestly fine with me. I don't want the material on PA or who I am to keep people from enjoying and attending PAX, end quote. Uh, Penny Arcade similarly distanced itself from the charity that we talked about above, uh, Child's Play, when Krahulik, the co-creator, and Jerry uh, Hul- Hulkins, sorry, realized the comic's content was impeding on the charity's outreach. Um, now, you'll remember we've talked about this these happenings in the past as well and even making light of them ourselves, but uh, Child's Play is now its own organization that Penny Arcade supports from afar. Much of what Krulik's resolution uh, is talking about stems from the, quote, difficult year uh, where he received negative public attention for things that he's said on Twitter, Um, the Penny Arcade blog, and, of course, at PAX as well. In 2010, which is where all of this stuff started, and Mm -hmm. to my own glee, and we can talk about that afterwards, (laughs) Penny Arcade ran a comic that made light of rape. Uh, and Krahulik and Holskins responded to the outcry by selling merchandise supporting that strip, the one in question. Uh, this, of course, all culminated into the Dick Wolves debacle. And we've talked about this on the show before. And, and yeah. yeah, so we, we, we are aware of this. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's funny. It's not funny. Anyway, Krahulik and Holskins <laughs> moved the Dick Wolf stuff from the store, but... On a panel in 2013, uh, he basically made the comment that it was a mistake to pull the merchandise, uh, and that, of course, statement reopened the said wound from before. Um, At PAX in Melbourne this year, moderators approved a panel with the description, quote, any titillation gets called out as sexist um, or misogynistic and involve any antagonist race other than Anglo-Saxons and you're a racist. (laughs) Yeah. This put the spotlight again back on Penny Arcade. <laughs> Shockingly. 
Uh, also this year, Kahulik tweeted a series of messages widely construed as transphobic, um, which w- I don't know if we have those tw- tw- tweets available, but if you read them, they're, you're just, oh, they're classic. They're, they're Facebook. Like- it's Men fake. have penises and women have vaginas. I don't understand how it works any other way. Right. Like it, <laughs> so it's yeah. like what you hear in the show every week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Except to millions of people, uh, which is probably not a good idea. Yeah. Um, so that's why we feel a little bit of you know solidarity with him. So uh, I've quote I've learned a ridiculous amount this year. Kruhulik's resolution read quote about myself and about other people. It's been a difficult year, probably the hardest of my life, and I realize I brought most of this on myself. That's a sobering realization. I also realize that I've made it harder for people I care about, my friends and my family, and I can't be this guy anymore, end quote. So I know that we went through a lot. It is a big, it's a big uh, story. Uh, and it's really spanning almost four years now. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it's a good thing to at least do? Let's get to the topic at hand. Is it a good idea for PA to distance itself from the charity and PACs? Oh, yeah. They, they, well, they've been distanced from the charity for a while. And right. I, I remember when this first came up, it was probably five or so years ago. And it was something was going to happen in Seattle where they were going to uh, – they were going to – there was some monument or fountain or something. And they were going to name it the Penny Arcade statue from – because of all the, the Child's Play support. And then somebody from the committee went and read the comic and then – that was a shit storm. So uh, obviously the comic is, is hilarious and funny. And whether you like Dick Wolves or not, it, it's, it appeals to different people's humors on different weeks, uh, different people's sense of humor. So they distanced themselves, uh, themselves from the charity years ago. And that hasn't been a problem. People still know that Penny Arcade were the founders of Child's Play Charity. They, it's their goodness, but it doesn't directly connect back to them. And I think that taking the, the packs, especially where after Mike's comments this year, so many people were like, oh, we're never going to PAX again. We're not going to buy booths. We're not going to do this. So separate those two as well. PAX, is, it's no longer the Penny Arcade Expo. It's just PAX. PAX. It's, it was formed. However it was formed, now it has a, a mind and a will of its own, and it's off, and it's its own thing. And the, the Penny Arcade comic strip is something different, and, and Child's Play Charity is something different than that. And I, I don't – companies do it all the time. You spin off different divisions. You break things out into divisions even if they're in part of your same corporation. I, th- I think it's just great for, for damage control and it's great to keep these things away from Mike. Uh, prob- that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. I, my, my only comment on this situation like this is I, I don't think Mike is a bad guy and I think he's been – when he says <laughs> the, end, the end quote, which essentially is that I can't be this guy anymore, I think that's the, the harshness of being in the public eye like that. We joke all the time. It's we've had our own jokes misconstrued before comedy is comedy. And there's a big separation between what's funny that I think is funny and what other people think is funny. I don't think he's a bad person anymore. And I think it's almost sad to hear him say that he can't be that guy anymore. I don't necessarily think that's a bad, that he's a bad person. Um, And I think the public's done a disservice to PA and, and gaming in general, just by, by jumping on his ass. Now, do I think it's probably not tactful to make light of rape? Yeah. Yeah, and that's his fault. That's his fault for assuming that people would think it would be funny. That's the thing is you, you go where your audience is. Comedians do this all the time. Stand-up comedians especially, they, they play to a certain audience that likes that sort of thing. And, and if they don't like that thing, then you don't listen to that comedian. And I think people were just shocked to see this coming out of the video game community. It was like a, a big shocker for them. But I don't but necessarily – Even then, it wasn't really it, – it, like I, I still to this day – I. And, I, and I'm not a defender. Like, believe me, I've done my share of uh, take back the night vigils and all these things. And, and I'm not for violence against women. But the, the rape comments had nothing to do with uh, woman rape or or violence against women or anything like that. It was literally the 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 dick wolves raping a a male adventurer to sleep. So I could see why some people would find it funny. I could see why some people wouldn't find it funny, but that's how a comic strip is supposed to work. Sometimes you open up peanuts and you're like, Oh, Charlie Brown's. Uh, I don't even understand this. And the next week you're like, Oh my God, his teacher went, wah, 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 wah. like it's, you know, you're not every, uh, single strip in a comic strip is something you enjoy, but some are, some aren't, and you're supposed to move on. But uh, obviously this one blew up out of proportion. And then by merching it, 
it made it that much yeah, worse. That and was the yeah, that's the thing is I think for him as a human being, I, I think he, he didn't he's he's probably not sitting in his house being like, man, I'm such a huge fan of rape. No one's doing that, right? It's ridiculous to assume that anyway. But by him and then making light of it again when people were already mad and heated and selling merchandise, jokingly talking about it, that's what got into such hot water. So again, like this is I think the distancing is good and for so many other reasons other than this. Um, but I, I really do feel sad when I see someone that has been broken down uh, from all this time. You know, someone that's done so much for the gaming community. Look, guys, you started a charity that's done $25 million, uh, in, b- believe it or not, domestic violence, right? So how could a guy that creates a charity that spent $25 million, uh, in, in helping women with domestic violence as well as kids with cancer, you know, have this cold, you know, sort of heart? So I don't know. I mean, I, I feel bad that everyone sort of jumped on this on his back and he's, he feels like this need to change as a human being because he's done wrong. Basically he just needs to shut the fuck up and know when he's talking publicly that he's talking publicly. He's not with a bunch of buddies in a room drinking a beer anymore, you know? And that's the thing that people don't realize when they, when they have an audience of that size, they forget that they're not drinking beers with a buddy anymore. Um, And and deep is saying in chat, he's bringing up the fact that, uh, you know, the term rape is now it's, it's gone from a sexual term, Right. Uh, to, uh, and he's he's not a fan, but it's become that term that's casually used in games. Oh, you know, we raped you. We raped this. Uh, I got ass raped at uh, with my taxes. Like it's it's become a term that that yeah. is, half of society is trying to take away for the sexual connotation of it. And the other half is trying to hold on to that as uh, as What's the crime suit? itself, hey. because because it's the name of the crime. Uh, well, I guess the, the crime would be, uh, you know, unlawful sexual something or other. But that is the term that everybody knows for that. So now you have this dichotomy here in the, uh, well, at least online where that term has become to mean something totally different. And because of that, people used to like, I use cunt all the time. Cunt used to be this, the, the word you could never say. It was the, the hard C you could never say cunt in front of women. We have plenty of women listeners and I say cunt all the time. It's well, it, you're not directing it directly at them, right? No, it's, it's it, like in, in the UK, Bloody cunt. Yeah, fucking, hey, what's up there, cunt? Hey, let's right. go out and have some bridge, you cunt. Like, it just depends on what you're used to. And here in the U.S., we're, it wasn't a term that we used a lot. But now, I use it a hell of a lot. Yeah, it is what it is. I don't mean that women are cunts. I just mean that you can be cunty. You can be Definitely. acting like a cunt. But you're like not. Dude, like, and the worst cunty is a dude acting cunty. That's the worst. Yes, yes, yes. Even worse. Yeah. If, if your buddy's acting cunty, he's a fucking cunt. That's He's, right. Yeah, that's bad. You want that? So yeah, I, I think mean, this episode no. is the highest cunt quotient of all of our episodes now. <laughs> and and again, most like like your your lovely wife is saying she hates that word. There's plenty of people that do, and that's the thing is I, I mean people hate words. They like words. They don't like. I, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't even like getting into it because it's there is no right or wrong answer, and that's the problem here. He he took it on himself to try to be right with his Dick Wolves joke, right? Like to prove that like, it's not a big deal, but it doesn't matter if you think it's not a big deal. That's the reality. It doesn't matter. It's how it's received. It's how it's received, period. And it was not received well. So, I don't know. Anyway. It is what it is, but. Speaking of cunt. (laughs) Speaking of cunt. segue perfectly. (laughs) Wow. In next week's or this week's story. Uh, So for our final what the fuck story, it's been a while since we've had one. So I'm going to actually announce it. Uh, sugar DVD has said PS4 users love porn, but Xbox one users watch it longer. Mm. Uh, apparently the appetites for pornography vary depending on which next generation system you own. If you believe some freshly released stats from the porn site, sugar DVD. Uh, so if you don't know sugar DVD, it is quote, this is from then them, the Netflix of porn. Uh, a nickname which Netflix probably absolutely hates. Um, They say that while PS4 owners look at porn more than Xbox One users do, Xbox One users look at it a bit longer. Hmm. Interesting. We like the storyline. You know what I mean? Uh, Three times as many PS4 owners signed up for accounts with Sugar DVD than the Xbox One owners in December, according to GamesBeat. Uh, But Xbox One users spend more time sampling the variety of adult entertainment. Uh, Quote, the average time spent per session varied quite a bit per console. Uh, Sugar DVD spokesman Nicole Settler told GamesBeat, uh, quote, for PS4 users, it was 17 minutes. 
Uh, that's called the one pump jump. And versus the 25 minutes that Xbox One users uh, spent online. So we like to last. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Sugar DVD also noted that 6% more of its members own a PS4, and those are the female members. So 6% more female members own the PS4 than the Xbox One. The site also noted that 43% of PS4 Sugar DVD members also streamed films on their computer care, uh, compared to the 29% for Xbox One users. So what do you think about this story? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, first off, it, I'm not sure why people on the Xbox need longer. To, like may, maybe they're, maybe people that have Xbox Ones are you know two-shot guys. Maybe you come, you reload, and you come again. Wow. Maybe the PlayStation 4 guys are only like, <laughs> you know, you, you blow your load, you're done for the night. I don't know. I do know that Sugar DVD is – they have a heavy integration in the gaming community. Uh, if you remember, Jay, you and I and Tiff were invited to the Sugar DVD party out at E3 last year, which took place mm-hmm. at that, that weird sketchy hotel yeah. place that where, that where Harmonix always holds their party. Uh, we chose to go to a different party during that, but they had uh, plenty of talent on hand there. I – yeah, I – we just we chose different parties that day, and actually no, it was up against Pactor's party because otherwise we probably would have checked it out probably. just to see what was Let's going on. Let's be honest with one another. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I I don't I don't even know why this stat needs to have happened. It's, this is great. <laughs> I saw the story. I'm like, this is the greatest story ever. Yes. It's uh, interesting, um, right? I mean, what what could be the reason that uh, so many more PS4 people actually are watching porn in general? I think that's the weirdest stat to me. Then that part is a, a huge stat. Like, so on one Three hand, times. you have people watching longer, and one stat you have people like it's a much bigger percentage. So, and then you have the stat that there's more women. So now, so there's more women on the PS4, but then people are spending more time in the Xbox One. But there's yeah, I just uh, but there's a bigger percentage. Of- so I go with Sarcasmo in chat. Who I think there's just not enough games to play on the PS4. People get bored and they're like, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here alone. I was going to play uh, some games. There's not a lot of games. But, uh, maybe I want to, uh, you know, have a little me time. Yeah. Sometimes you need some me time. A little PS4 play, if you will. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was a good choice. You're welcome. Yes. Everyone, you're welcome. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. It's like it's one of those things where I have to agree. Another thing in chat, which is who's watching porn on their on their consoles? Why are what is you go to your room, all right? You don't fucking you're not in your living room. You're not this is not a fucking, you know, time to be, I don't know. That's you go into your room, you shut the door like a true gentleman, you're in your app. No? Yeah. Yeah, you got your you got your four inch screen. You got your 17-inch screen, you got your 30-inch screen, and you got maybe your 65-inch screen. And things things look better on a 65 than they do on a 4-inch. Mm. I don't know if I need, like, the, a theatrical experience for my porn. No. I don't know if that's a needed thing. You just want to – you can go watch the 500-inch version with uh, Paul Rubens. See, yeah. I, I actually agree with Blue, Blue Steel, which is, at least on the Xbox One, you could literally be playing Call of Duty – and then in picture in picture, be watching porn in the upper right hand corner. Oh, true, true. You just keep it there. You just keep it working. Lo- working. The- They're like, why are you running into that wall? No reason. <laughs> no reason. One handed cool. gaming is a bitch, dude. It's, it's hard. cool. It's cool. Shoot. I'll shoot when I'm done. I'll shoot and then I'll shoot. <laughs> wow. Uh, good choice. Well, nice story. Nice story. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, <laughs> if, you want, if you want to go where the porn guys are, PS4. There you go. <laughs> so D Smooth, what do you think about this story? <laughs> Jay, that story has me saying, what the fuck? And on that, we'll hop over into the mailbag and voicemails. Acid Snow asks, What's the first game you two plan to beat in 2014? I just completed the new Tomb Raider, and wow, that game was just as good as Hitman's quick look made it out to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. a good thing. Oh, they, it's, I, I didn't even see that episode of quick shits or quick hits or hit quick bong hits or hit does hits, hit drops, tabs, whatever it was called. <laughs> hit drops hits? Wow. It drops hits, yeah. 
uh, putting on the hits. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's got a lot of shows, but they all involve the same thing. And it's showing video games right when they come out <laughs> right, there you go. and that's, doing, doing that's massive amounts of drugs. <laughs> that, should, that should be the title. <laughs> really? You should put it out there on front street. Hit plays it first. Like that's, <laughs> that's what you games do. while on drugs. <laughs> Check it out guys. Uh, 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 well, ask us now. First off, glad you're you're p- giving Hitman some views because yeah, he really likes that. He does. He, he, it it helps the ego, and it's why he doesn't <laughs> mind being our producer here. Right. But, um, but as far as what we're looking to to beat, I guess mine is probably going to be uh, Titanfall. No, actually, no. Titanfall is multiplayer only. So, uh, first game to beat in 2014 that I don't already have. Um, well, I guess I I could cheese out and say you know i'll play rise that tiff's had here but i haven't played yet i could beat that but no i'll probably say uh destiny maybe or actually is there a single player campaign destiny either no it's not really like a beatable game right it's like, yeah so uh, it, i guess it'd be the halo campaign at some point yeah uh, right unless oh no yeah no actually plants versus zombies garden warfare is also a uh a multiplayer only title so yeah it's probably not until we get to a halo game yeah, that's gonna be down the road. Well, mine's Is Dead it? Rising because I got mine's easy because I just got Dead Rising. So, and I literally started playing it in the new year. So, once I get the time, I'll probably be hopefully building it. Although, actually, um, I'm almost done with Kill Zone as well, and I actually enjoyed that uh, on the on the PS4. So, I got two games. So we'll see which one ends up being first. I'm actually playing more Dead Rising now than I I kind of let go of the of the Kill Zone thing, but more because. Now that everyone's got the Xbox One, that's just the system I'm on. I'm playing Call of Duty. I'm, you know, so. Well, Tiff and I have been bouncing back and forth about picking up Dead Rising. So maybe we'll pick that up and, and play through that. Uh, that may beat it. But I, yeah, I really don't know Acid Snow. All I know is that Hits Quick Shits are uh, mm. definitely something you should keep your eye on. The Shit Stains. Yes. <laughs> the Hits Shit Stains. That should be what they call that's the show. Saying. Yes. It leaves a, a, an impression. Hits Shit Stains leaves an impression. In your underpants. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Altius asks, what are your thoughts on the planned oversaturation of AAA shooter titles in 2014? We know Titanfall is coming in March, Destiny in September, 343's next Halo game sometime this year, and assu- the assumption that there'll be an annual Call of Duty release. Is that just too much for one year? Yes. What will you guys be playing? Oh, it's definitely too much. And we didn't even cover like Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare, and all these other, you know, one-off yeah. titles. But if you count, like, the, 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 the legit... Fancy game, all that shit, man. Yeah. The legit AAA titles, yeah, you definitely nailed all four right there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm rereading this mm-hmm. now, and I just... All these things are things I'm planning on getting, which I is know, the hard the part. part, right? Like, how, are you, how will you ever, in your, in your time frame, be able to play... Titanfall while playing even just let's like say just Titanfall and Destiny just playing two shooters is actually really hard to do yeah, especially know? on the console you get the console confusion yeah, you're like yeah. oh I'm trying to run and I'm meleeing people oh my god what's going on but yeah, it's gonna be very hard and it, it, this is a problem in general this is like a, a very it's a very you know uh, nice little little question but it also really goes into like a broader thing which is that there are just too many fucking games nowadays and no one has time to play any of them um, and it's, especially as you get older, like our, like, you know, our age and with our community, it's, it's a pain in the ass, frankly. So you've kind of got to just pick and choose and you say, I'm going to be a destiny player and that's what I'm going to play. Uh, or you do the other route, which is you don't play either of them. But then what's up happening with a guy like me is I, I like to win. Uh, and because you don't have enough time invested in the game, you don't know the nuances of the game. You get shit on. So yeah. it's, it's tough. It's a, that's a great question. I, it's not something that I, I really believe it or not. I like I know it seems like I should love to have a lot of games to choose from, but at the end of the day, like as a community, even when we started, we started with Halo, uh, mm-hmm. and then we moved into MMOs and all these other things. Um, but that was a very slow, you know, progression. And nowadays, these games turn over so quickly, it's hard yeah, to get yeah. a community to rally against one game. It's it's fucking impossible. Yeah, so I just I don't know, it's tough. I just I have no idea what we're gonna do. Like I I know that I guess Titanfall has the advantage here because Titanfall is first to market, coming out in March. And you know that everybody's going to be fucking playing that. Yeah. Uh, and I guess what happens after that is just how did Titanfall treat you? Um, what's its longevity? What's the community like? And 
how much can that next thing bring you in? I know that I'm picking all these up no matter what. Now, it's, it's which one after I play each of these for three months, four months, which one I'm still playing come next year when there's no AAA first-person shooters coming out except for the next Call of Duty game. Like, you're right. supposed to have that break year where it's just like, oh, it's only a Call of Duty game. Shoo, I can just play Halo all year. I can just play Borderlands all year. So, But now it's just – it's going to be insane. So yeah, we'll, uh, this is really going to be one of those ones that I just – I can't call a winner. I just don't know how it's going to shake out, but I know I'm getting them all. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, if any of you feedback, give us a call, 773-527-2961. Email us at podcast at tooltoplay.com. You can also comment in this episode's thread in the Tool to Play homepage. Sponsors, still looking for some sponsors. Bouncing some things back and forth with some current ones. But, you know, if you want to sponsor us, you know, you tell us what you want to sell. We'll tell you if you're going to pay us. We'll sell it. You pay us. Boom. Done. Twitter us up. You can find everything po- uh, Nah, we'll start with the, the podcast today because usually I start with tool to play, but you know, people don't really, we don't have enough subscribers on the, the Twitter feed for the podcast itself. So the podcast is at twitter.com slash still underscore got underscore game underscore is the shift hyphen. For those of you who don't know what that is, maybe you're just all retarded and that's why we don't have enough subscribers there. I don't know, but just follow us on Twitter. Everything tool to play is at twitter.com slash tool to play. I, King of the Internet, got of everything that's holy, I'm at twitter.com slash Derek Nolan. And you can find me over at twitter.com slash dude I rock. Facebook the fuck out of us. Facebook.com slash tool to play. Facebook.com slash Derek Nolan. Facebook.com slash dude I rock. We also have a YouTube channel. It has this show. It has Thick and Thin with LB and Duty whenever that's on, like once a year. It has hits show, uh, bong hits, quick shits, hit, putting on the quick hit shit, bit, hit, 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 shit, tits, or whatever you're going to call it. It's some show that has something that rhymes with hit and new games. And, you know, hit will probably be ripping some bangers there and it'll be awesome. It'll be like, this game fucking rocks, dude. I just fucking opened the shrink wrap. I haven't even put it in yet, but it's fucking sick. <sighs> Oh my god, best game ever. I just, the disc is shiny. So that's his show <laughs> in a nutshell. Now, it, it goes beyond that. Once the game actually gets in the console, it gets really interesting. But that's like the first half hour to an hour of his show. And it is awesome. And you, you don't want to miss this. So that's quick hits, quick shits, whatever. But if you're, uh, if you're subscribed to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash tool to play, and you subscribe to our channel, whenever our show comes on there, or any of these other shows, including Hits Quick Bong Hits, it will be there too. And you will know that it's there, and you'll be able to watch Hit and have a good time with that show. But our show, you just know when it's coming. Uh, also, download the app. Uh, go to the uh, iTunes App Store. Uh, there's a Tool to Play app there. Search for Tool to Play. You're going to get a little app that'll show you all the Tool to Play news content on the homepage. You'll be able to watch all these videos that we're talking about. So in addition to subscribing to our YouTube channel, you can also just pop up your app. You'll be like, oh, hey, you know, I was listening to uh, Still Got Game this week. Oh, check this out. Look, look, this is when D Smooth was super funny. Oh, oh, wait, no, that's going to be too long because that's the whole show. Here, here's when Dude Air Rock was funny. And then, oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> sorry, Jay, but I had to do it. Um, so download the app. It's free. It free is the best price you can find. It's on the App Store. Search Tool to Play. Um, please rate and review our podcast in iTunes. Jay, how many stars should they give us? 15 stars. 15 is correct. If iTunes somehow does not let them click the 15th star, what should they narrow yeah, it down to? That's just the default. That's okay. the lowest you can go. Yeah, five is the lowest. Yeah. Uh, the, the one through four are just testing things. They don't want you to use those. Five is really like, that means I like this. So just pick five. And then if, uh, if you're going to write a review, it would be something to the fact of this. Um, before I found this vidcast, my life was sad. I was all alone. I just sat in my basement playing video games. And then I discovered Still Got Game with Derek D. Smooth Nolan and Joel Dude I Rock Albert. And their show, it touched me. Not in a dirty way, but some way special. And now I feel like my life has meaning. And I love this show. I look forward to it every week. And I highly recommend you do too. Five stars. Boom. Damn. Man, that fucking... I, I was reading that right off the screen here. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> it brought a tear to my eye. Holy shit, man. I, I didn't mean to cry tonight on the show, but that is... 
Ah, that's the kind of help we give people. And uh, hopefully we can pass that same kind of help to all of you. So once again, go to iTunes, search up Still Got Game, and, uh, and we're right there. Subscribe, and it helps our numbers. Give us, the, uh, uh, give us your, your five-star review, and, and it helps us out. Uh, I guess last but not least, please join us each and every Monday night live here on Twitch.tv. It's 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash tool to play. You can also follow us on Twitch and you'll be notified like you have that iPhone app. We'll be like, Phew, tool to play just went live. And sometimes it'll be this show. Other times it'll be other stupid shit. But <laughs> uh, other times it'll be Hit doing his good show. Sometimes it'll be LB who's just now he's like, oh, look at me. I'm streaming fucking yeah, Call of Duty like way too often. But if, if, if you really don't give a shit about that, you can just ignore that. You can, you can wait for the good content. Um, but, but either way, you definitely want to join, follow us. I can see the problem is I can see my cohorts here losing their shit. Jay is practically spitting up his drink. Um, but yeah, that's twitch.tv slash tool to play. Follow us there. And, uh, it's always a good time. Except when LB's on. Right, Jay? Ah, uh, what the fuck? Okay, sometimes it's fun when LB's on. If, as long as he's not streaming like 8,000 times a night and stopping a stream and restarting it. Because sometimes those, those notifications get bothersome. But, they do. They yeah. Do. But now that he's finally got his head out of his ass and he knows what he's doing, maybe those will slow down a little bit. Uh, so on that, I guess we'll wrap this episode up. I am Derek D. Smooth Nolan. I am Joel Nudarock Albert. Party on, motherfuckers.